Hello guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel once again and uh, as you guys already know that recently I went ahead and tested one of the Interceptor 650s and here is my little review for this uh, beautiful bike and I know that uh, Interceptor 650 reviews they are all over YouTube and they have been done to death uh, but this one is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to test ride this bike as a Meteor 350 owner and somebody who loves to ride that bike and I just wanted to see if it's worth it to trade that bike in and get myself a uh, twin engine 650 so without further ado let's get into it definitely feels a little bit heavier when it's stationary as compared to the Meteor 350 but once you just start riding it it just it's really an effortless bike Ooh, I do love this uh, the power that this twin engine packs up as compared to that uh, single cylinder 350 on the Meteor Talking about the dashboard, if I have to compare this to Meteor 350, this one is a double dial, a very classic looking uh, analog, majority of it is analog anyways. Uh, we've got a speedometer on one side and just the engine rev meter on the other end which just tells you the RPMs on your uh, engine. And a very tiny uh, LED screen for the fuel gauge. Uh, which I never trust even on my Meteor and that's about it it doesn't get the tripper navigation which I do find helpful in some cases if I'm going somewhere new then uh, I use my tripper navigation every now and then so yeah if I buy this bike I'll definitely miss that it's a shame that uh, Interceptor is a much more expensive bike and it doesn't get that triple navigation from Royal Enfield. The braking is really good as you would expect from a bigger engine bike. I assume the disc brakes are bigger in size on this bike as compared to the Meteor 350, correct me if I'm wrong. Sharing on this bike feels really easy. As I said before, it's a very nimble bike, so it's performing really well. that's really bugging me is this brake lever which kind of feels it is tucked away under the engine and it is a bit hard to access with even my sport shoes I only wonder how it will feel with uh, rigid motorcycle boots and uh, I do miss that Meteor 
kind of lever which is really accessible and bigger in size and not tucked away under the engine parts so that's something that I'm missing on this bike used to right now maybe it's the seating stance uh, on the Meteor 350 it's a very upright saddle and it's a really comfortable seat whereas this seat is not as comfortable or the seating position on this bike is not as comfortable as the Meteor 350 maybe it does take a little while to get used to it but still it's uh, by no means uncomfortable it's just not something that I'm not used to. Once again, the counter steering on this bike feels really easy and really agile. And for some of you who do not know what counter steering is, I'll be uh, making a quick video soon on that one as well because when I started riding bikes in New Zealand I didn't know what counter steering was although I might have been doing it unintentionally but to understand what counter steering is really changed the way I deal with curves on the road and how I handle myself on the bike it kind of gives you a clearer view what you are doing and why you are doing it and how it can actually save you uh, in an emergency situation so I'll be making a video soon about that so keep an eye out for that one just not happening well uh, let's have a quick look on the curb appeal of this bike how it actually looks because uh, it's not just all about riding the bike it's the looks as well let's get this thing down Ooh, it definitely does have a really British motorcycle look to it, one of those uh, 60s motorcycle looks, it just is beautiful, especially that red tank looks really good to my eyes, and I love that chrome on those exhaust pipes, which are a tad bit quiet for my taste, but that can be changed easily, uh, considering it's a Euro 5 bike. It has to meet certain standards, so those standards, uh, things like catalytic converters and all that, does make the bike a bit quieter. So let's uh, see how it performs on the open highway. definitely feels faster than the Meteor 350 which is a tad bit underpowered on the highway but yeah I can definitely feel the difference on this one it's just doing everything right and the engine has still a lot to give I'm doing about 80 right now and I'm pretty sure this bike can easily do 140 or even 150 as a top speed 
Let me know if you have an Interceptor 650, what was your top speed on this bike? just fine really comfortable even though it's a tad bit windy but still the bike is handling really well yeah so I think uh, that's my take on this beautiful bike I love the engine but I do not like the seating position plus that brake paddle that is a deal breaker for me let me know in the comments down below if you own an Interceptor 650 what do you like about it and if you have a Meteor 350 and you have tried an Interceptor 650 either as a test ride or one of your friends what did you feel about it? Would you trade your Meteor 350 for an Interceptor or would you actually wait for the Super Meteor 650 to be out? Once again Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.